Hey there guys, how's it going? Back with another movie review. So, 2019 has been a, how should I say, a pretty terrible year for movies. Um, yeah, there's been the occasional great movie that's come out, like John Wick 3, which was a masterpiece. Um, how to Train Your Dragon 3, which was another masterpiece, another animated movie. I reviewed both of those movies on my channel, if you want to check those reviews out. Um, and there have been a few movies that have been okay, but... I've got to say, the vast majority of movies in 2019, like the vast majority of them, I'm talking the, the overwhelming majority, the overwhelming majority of movies this year have been so bad that it doesn't even bear thinking about. I mean, the state of the entertainment industry in general, but the state of movies in particular, it's been so bad in this day and age. But I have to tell you, out of all the movies this year, all the absolute travesties that have come out this year there is no movie that pissed me off on a personal level as much as this movie toy story 4 and you're probably thinking after all the garbage that has come out this year like like the hellboy remake like the pet cemetery remake like captain marvel like dark phoenix you know, those are just some off the top of my head, some terrible movies that I reviewed so far this year that were absolute travesties. Why did this movie, an animated kids movie, piss me off so much? It's very simple, guys. It is from th This is a franchise that I love. Okay, this is a franchise that not only did I grow up with, but it's a franchise that means a lot to me personally. The first Toy Story movie in, in 1995 was actually the first movie that I ever saw in theatres. Uh, my mother took me to see that movie when I was just, I, I think I was maybe a year old, maybe not even that. You know, I was born in 1994 and I, I may have been just a year old when that movie came out. And yeah, it was the first movie I ever saw in theatres. I absolutely loved it as a child. Um, you know, I can actually briefly remember um getting it on vhs the first time and i watched it so many times absolutely loved it the sequel which came out in 19 i believe it was 1999 i want to say the sequel came out um it was it was several years later i know that saw that one in theater too absolutely loved it I remember going to see it with my family I, again i was very young at the time um and those two movies they were just the perfect animated movies emotionally you know they were very hard-hitting emotional movies they were surprisingly mature you know they had um, certain themes and certain life lessons and they were surprisingly thought-provoking that was one of the things i loved about the, the toy story movies particularly the second movie was was particularly thought-provoking for a for a multitude of reasons then i believe about 12 years later they brought out the third movie now Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see that movie in theater, and yeah, there's a there's a bit of a story there. Basically, I was I was due to see the movie in theater. I was booked to see it, and I ended up getting trouble in trouble with the law. I ended up getting arrested for fighting, and I got locked locked up for a bit. So yeah, I wasn't able to see that movie in theater. I had to wait till it came up on DVD. Yeah, I was a bit of a, a bit of a dumbass back then, getting into trouble. Uh, but I mean, we were all we were all young once. We were all teenagers once. But yeah, that movie came out, I believe, 12 years after the second movie in 2010, and it was it was beautiful. That movie was a beautiful ending and a beautiful conclusion and a throwback to the previous two movies, you know. And and it was just it felt like a great way to end the series. I remember when when that movie came out, and I remember just how in awe people were of it and how it brought back so many childhood memories and. You know, it, it dealt with a lot of different themes, like the themes of letting go and the themes of growing up and responsibilities and loyalty and friendship and stuff like that. And it was just such a, a it was, the, the voice acting was amazing. The animation was beautiful and the ending was so emotionally mature and hard hitting. And it was just a, a great way to end the series. I mean, it really did put the icing on the cake and the cherry on top for a for a trilogy you know they dotted all the i's they crossed all the t's it was a great ending a great ending to the series and they didn't need any more sadly though we live in an era when 
there's no originality whatsoever nowadays. There's no originality, you know, there's no real creative minds in the industry. You know, there's no there's no individuals working in that industry who can come up with their own ideas, their own concepts, their own stories, their own plans. Um and, and basically these people in Hollywood are in the business for two reasons. One is to milk the fuck out of these franchises and keep dragging up the past and preying on people's gullible nostalgia in order to, you know, keep keep making sequels and reboots, sequels and reboots. Everything's got to be either a sequel or a reboot or a remake or a, a reimagining. You know, they're talking about making another another Shrek movie. You know, they're talking about bringing that, you know, digging up that fossil. I mean, so many movies this year have been have been remakes or prequels or sequels or unnecessary reboots. And that's what's happened to this franchise, sadly. This franchise, which effectively ended in 2010, is another one of these shameless cash-in um, milked franchises. Now, Toy Story 4, which came out just a few weeks back, I saw this movie on its release day. <laughs> I then saw the movie a second time, believe it or not. Now, that it makes me feel like an idiot to say it out loud that I went to see this movie in theatre twice. I wanted to give it a chance. I wanted to like this movie because I love this franchise so much. I wanted, I, I just wanted to see if I was wrong the first time, because when I, when I first went to see this movie, I could not believe, I could not believe, I didn't want to believe it, I didn't want to believe how bad this movie is, this movie is a fucking travesty, it is atrocious, it fails on every single level and you guys that have been following my movie review series will probably be having like a deja vu now because I've said that about other movies this year and whereas this might not be as bad as those movies this movie like I said on a personal level pissed me off more um I, I couldn't believe it this movie is so bad it takes characters who we know and love from this series characters like Woody and Buzz Lightyear who are the two main characters it tears those characters to shreds. It completely destroys who these characters are and who they used to be. It takes their character arcs and their the very core of who these characters are and it destroys them. I want to give you a, a quick example of what I'm talking about. You guys remember in the previous movies, Buzz Lightyear. Who is Buzz Lightyear as a character? Well, he's a, he's a space ranger, right? He's a hero. He's a superhero, a, an intergalactic warrior who you know, defends the galaxy, you know, that that's that's the character that he's based on, and of course he's a toy version of that character, but what was interesting about the previous movies and how his character was portrayed is he takes that same mindset and that same mentality and that same courage and bravery and takes it into his, um, basically takes it into the real world as a toy, you know, he protects the other toys, he keeps them safe, you know, he's kind of a, um, a, a co-leader, he's kind of like Woody's deputy, if you know what I mean, and you know, one of his main character arcs and, 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 and the thing that he's known for is he he doesn't think before he acts. You know, when he finds that somebody's in danger, he immediately goes, there's no time to lose. And he'll jump straight out a window. He'll jump straight into danger head first, not even thinking. You know, he, he, he reacts instinctively, just like his character that he's based on. You know, he instinctively saves lives and he instinctively does you know what he what he believes needs to be done in order to save the day that's who his character is he's a he's a hero right to his very core a selfless hero in this character from this movie and i'm not talking about his character from previous movies in this movie he's a fucking useless idiot they take this character buzz lightyear and he does fuck all in this movie this whole movie he second guesses himself um, when, when one of his friends is in danger and needs his help, he sits there thinking, oh, well, what should I do? Um, um, uh, I need to listen to my inner voice. And he's pressing all his buttons and whatever his button, to <laughs> whatever his like voice box, his button tells him what to do. Uh, he'll, he'll just do that, you know, whatever it implies or hints that he needs to do. And it ends up getting him into trouble and it ends up leading him astray. And, you know, he ends up abandoning his best friend towards the end of the movie because of this idiotic idea about listening to his voice box <laughs> and his inner voice. It was so stupid. that he, He's basically, they take a hero, 
and turn him into a comedy sidekick. In this movie, he's literally there for comic relief. Everything he does is like slapstick, um, bullshit, you know, incompetent, like, you know, like the Three Stooges. That, that's what his character was like in this movie. A bumbling idiot who felt like a side character. Didn't even feel like a hero like he did in the previous movies. Um, you know, like I said, he second guesses himself. Um, he makes stupid decisions from start to finish. And, and the things he says, the things he comes out with, the dialogue, and, and, and just the way his character is in the movie was so different to, to the previous movies. It's unreal. It's like they just took that character and just, and just shafted him completely. Now, <laughs> let's move on to the main character of the movie, which is, of course, Woody. All I can really say about it is they turned him into a cook. They, they turned this character into a fucking cook. Now, one of the themes that was dealt with in, in, in one of the previous movies, in the third movie, I mentioned this earlier, it was the theme of letting go and moving on. And although Andy was, was, was his child, you know, the, the, the child that he, that he basically watched grow up ever since he was a young boy, um, you know, he, he struggles to let him go because he's, he's grown up now. He doesn't have time to play with toys. You know, he's got college, he's got work, he's got other things going on. And that was Woody's whole thing was leading the rest of the toys because he's their sheriff. He's their leader, leading them to a new life, you know, to a new child, to new responsibilities and ultimately letting him grow up and letting him move on. And that was part of the theme of the third movie. Well, they explore that theme in this movie. But in a much more sinister and much more twisted way, in my opinion, I hated the plot of this movie. Basically, the, the, the child who adopts him in the previous movie, Bonnie, who promises to look after him and promises to take care of him. <laughs> in, in this movie, she basically ignores his very existence. She acts as if he isn't there, like she never even acknowledges him once the whole movie. In fact, the only interaction she has with him is where she she pulls his sheriff badge off and gives it to and gives it to Jesse, the female cowgirl, then throws him in the cupboard. And I've got to say, throughout this whole movie, if if you're worried about um, social justice warrior bullshit getting put into the minds of your child, do not take your child to see this movie because this movie is filled with some of the most despicable feminist propaganda I have ever seen in my entire life. Every single man in this movie, every single male, is a fucking idiot. Like I said, they made Buzz into a bumbling, incompetent fool. And it, sh it highlights, this movie highlights the very worst in female nature. Now, the villain of this movie, the main villain, is a female, it's, the, it's a, a doll called, I believe the name's Gabby Gabby, the, the, the main villain of the movie, it's a doll. And basically, in the previous movies, you, got, you might remember the previous villains in the movies, they had a backstory which made you understand their motivations. Like, in the second movie, for example, you had uh, the Prospector, who was obviously part of um, Woody's crew in, in the TV show that he was based on, the toy. And basically... The reason why he was so bitter and so angry at the world and angry at children and angry at other toys and stuff like that was because, you know, his backstory was he'd been kept on a, on a dime store shelf for generations watching other toys be sold, you know, while, while he never got sold. So he was sat there and he felt neglected and unloved and uh, he never really felt that love from a child and he never felt that love from other toys either. You know, he was never part of that. He never got to experience that. And... He was also put into storage for a long time. So you understood why he was motivated to do what he did. You understood his motivations. But at the same time, you also understood that what he did was wrong. All right, the, the movie made it very clear that by emotionally manipulating Woody and the other characters the way he did, and then trying to force them with physical force to go along with his agenda, it made it perfectly clear that what he did was wrong. He was a bad guy. He was a villain. Well, in this movie, the villain is a female villain. And I found it extremely, and I mean extremely sinister, the way that this character was handled. Basically, in the start of the movie, she tries to convince, she tries to convince um, Woody to give her his voice box because her voice box is defective. So she needs it so that she can then 
um, you know, get adopted by a kid and, and whatnot. It's, this, it's a bit, basically the same shit as before, but there's obviously a little bit of a, of a difference there. Obviously, there's, there's a different motivation, but it's a similar motivation in the sense that because she was defective, she never had a child, so she never knew, you know, she never understood or got to experience a child's love. And in order to try and experience that, she basically kidnaps Woody. She kidnaps his friend, who's like this retarded fork. Who is like it's like a spork that got made into a toy, and it's basically retarded. It, it doesn't know anything. And yeah, she basically kidnaps them both. Um, she tries to take his voice box by force. When he doesn't give it up and he escapes, she she keeps the retarded spork and tries to you you know she she basically holds it hostage as if to say yeah if you, if you don't if you don't give me your voice box you'll never see your friend again and shit like that then it takes a very sinister turn she talks to the to the retarded sport character and you know manages to find out and divulge a lot of information because Woody confided in this character you know he confided in this this spork and gave it all his life story basically his backstory told him about Andy and about Bonnie and and you know how he felt at the time and his experience of, of watching these kids grow up and basically she then rather than try to take what Woody has by force she does what very typically women tend to do in these situations she emotionally manipulates Woody she basically takes him and she says look you know she, she, she preys on his love of children you know she preys on his good nature you know she preys on his heroic um, streak that he has and she ma emotionally manipulates him into giving him her voice box you know so he gives up his voice to this woman and he says to her you know basically just leave me the, f the, f the spork you can have whatever you want then I'm, I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating here like a minute later we're supposed to sympathize with this character. It doesn't make it clear in this movie that by emotionally manipulating a man to get what you want, that that should be frowned upon. No, we're supposed to feel sorry for her. And the movie is, it, it's directed and scripted in a way where we're supposed to think that Woody is the bad guy. We're supposed to think that his views and, and his morals and his ideals and his you know his um his morality and his outlook on life and his idea of loyalty and um and stuff like that you know we we're supposed to believe that that's old fashioned and that's selfish and that's putting the other toys in danger you know his his values are somehow wrong you know they're outdated and you no know, you should you should give up your voice to this woman because she hasn't had what you've had uh, and she's jealous so yeah she's manipulating you you give her what you've got and we're supposed to feel sorry for her, like, it uses its soundtrack and its its direction and stuff like that to try and make you feel sorry for this character. And this character ultimately doesn't pay the price. Yeah, she gets humiliated at one point, but she doesn't pay the price for what she did, for, em for emotionally manipulating him when trying to take what he had by force didn't work. And again, it, it like I said, it highlights the, the very worst of female traits. And I, I hated this shit. And I haven't even talked about the main feminist vibe of the movie. Is it any is it any wonder that when this movie came out, Disney actually released merchandise like they had they had T-shirts of of Bo Peep saying I'm a woman. What's your superpower? And you know the the way that the movie was orchestrated, it's like Bo Peep is on her own now. She doesn't have a kid or a family. Oh, but she's a strong, independent woman, and she lives on her own, and she scares people with with a fucking robotic skunk, and she she steals whatever she wants. She goes wherever she wants, and again, you know she she tells men what to do and belittles them all the time, and it's just. Uh, this movie had a very sinister feminist vibe that I absolutely hated. Um, the 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 humor in this movie. This movie isn't funny. You know, it, it has a lot of forced humor. You remember the the first Toy Story movie? One of the best things about that movie was how funny it was. It was it was effortlessly hilarious by just using like you know just very simple and subtle dialogue that was so funny in that movie. And there was like funny slapstick humor too. Um, none of that in this movie. This, this movie has nothing like that. This movie's so bland. Um, the jokes are not funny at all. You know, there was one scene from the trailer, which um, 
was actually a lot longer in the movie. And that scene to me felt like, do you know how in Family Guy and shows like that, they have like little like flashback scenes where they, where they, where they use them to waste time. Like something stupid will happen. Like the scene where Peter Griffin, he's like, I have a new place to hide my porn. And it goes on for like five minutes, him going through all these doors. And it's just a waste of time. There was, there was scenes like that in this movie. I'm not even kidding. It was like a scene where they're like, how do we get that key? Oh, we'll, we'll do this. And it's like they're attacking this old woman. And, oh, no, we'll do this. They'll distract her, then attack her. Oh, no, we'll do this. And then they, they follow her home, and she has a bath. She looks in the fridge. And it's all this other shit. Like, it, it just it's time-wasting bullshit that they use in, in shows like Family Guy. They use that time-wasting bullshit here in this movie. And I'm like, what a load of shit. This movie sucks. How how long has this video been going on for now? I don't even know. It's like, it must must be nearly 20 minutes now. But, man... This movie was a travesty, absolute garbage. All I can say about the movie is, yeah, the animation looks okay. That's the that's the only positive thing I can say. But is it any better than the than the previous movies? Is it any better than Toy Story 3's animation? Well, you, it better be. I mean, it's nearly ten years later, so I would expect it to be. But yeah, this movie sucked. Um, the, I, the name of the director, I can't remember the director's name, but I believe this is the first movie he's ever directed. I don't want to see anything that that director directs ever again. Um, I mean, w why they couldn't have just got John Lasseter to come back and direct it, I've no idea. But I guess he didn't want to direct it. I think he did produce the movie, but I don't think he had a whole lot to do with the production, if I'm being honest. Um, this movie's a travesty. One out of ten. Absolute garbage. Th th there isn't a single movie this year that pissed me off as much as this. I'm serious. Crap movie. Absolute garbage. Um, one out of ten. Absolute garbage garbage um i'm trying to think what else to say man i'm trying to think of well, well look this movie all i really want to say now is this movie highlights the fact that hollywood just cannot leave any franchise alone you know everything has to be a reboot doesn't it or a remake they can't just leave a franchise that was successful and that people loved and had a great satisfying ending they can't just leave them alone can they they always have to milk every penny that they can out of these bloody franchises. They always have to put this social justice warrior politics bullshit into the movie. This movie sucked. I, I, I want to stop talking about this, man. I hate this movie. Um, one out of ten. One of the worst movies of, 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 you know, one of the worst animated movies I've ever seen, definitely. Absolute crap. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching and God bless.